Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we have Kelly Vaughn. Kelly, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be back on here. Yeah, yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm super pumped to be here doing some some uh, e-commerce stuff today. Right, this is going to be great. So, uh, for those of us who are not familiar with your work, and and I can't imagine that's anybody at this point. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so I am the CEO and founder of The Tap Room, uh, our Shopify Plus agency specializing in uh, custom development solutions for high growth businesses. I'm also the co-host of Ladybug Podcast, and I'm also the co-host of Commerce Tea, which is a podcast I started with a friend uh, 15 weeks ago. Oh, nice. So I am doing two podcasts now, and I am all over the place with content uh, related to Shopify and freelancing and e-commerce. Oh, I also wrote a book. Oh, I also wrote a book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the casual drops. I'm ready. Um, <laughs> lots of love for the Ladybug podcast in the chat. Um, and what's up, chat? Welcome, welcome back to the show. It's good to see you. We've been uh, I've been running a workshop in the early weeks. So I've only been doing one episode a week lately, and it feels like half of my heart is gone. Um, so I'm super excited to be back. Uh, so we're going to talk specifically today about e-commerce, and and one of the things that I think is really interesting about e-commerce, especially with the the lowered barrier to entry that we're seeing with the tools like Shopify that we're going to talk about today, but also with others, you know, Snipcart, Stripe, uh, they're they're making it more accessible to just get an idea out there and and to make something available. And right. one of my favorite examples of this is actually your store, uh, shop.kelly.com, where you have these incredibly funny. Um, like mugs and t-shirts and stickers that are just kind of around developer humor. Can you, can you talk a little bit about the, like the origin of that, where that came from? Yeah. So it all originated with wanting to learn more about headless commerce and to define headless commerce, we also have to talk about e-commerce, but I'm just going to jump ahead a little bit here. So uh, if you're unfamiliar with the concept of headless commerce it's basically separating the storefront from the back end of the site. So you can use, let's say, Shopify as your uh, your home for all your product data and uh, transactions and everything, but build basically take that data and build a custom storefront. So I wanted to figure out how that works, specifically with Shopify. So I started a Gatsby site, I actually used my own personal site for it. Mm. And I I uh, used Shopify store for an API to just pull in data, but I needed a product to test it out, obviously. And so uh, there is a website called Printful, which is a print on demand service. So you design the product and when an order comes in, it immediately goes to them. They print it, they ship it for you. And so you don't have to do any work except for design That's the product. Wonderful. And the occasional like customer service inquiry. Mm -hmm. It's it's great. And so I took a screenshot of a Git log, like a history of a project I worked on that was really, really frustrating me. <laughs> and it has things like, please work, fuck. <laughs> oh, sorry, I don't know if I can do that on here. Um, no, okay, cool. <laughs> and, and just like a bunch of just gibberish. And it was hilarious looking at that. So I decided to create this mug and it generates these pictures for you that you can use like stock photos. And one of them is the picture of the mug with the really sad, pathetic Git log just surrounded by donuts. <laughs> and I posted a picture of that on Twitter because I couldn't stop laughing about it. And somebody was like, okay, no, seriously, I want to buy that product. Like, I want to buy that mug. And I'm like, okay, well, this is just a test. But if you want to buy the mug, then by all means, buy the mug. And so I opened up the store for purchasing by anybody. And I it, that, was, that was the start of Cavelli, which I guess I've landed on that's what I'm pronouncing it. Oh, I'm actually, I didn't realize that that was the, the there was a, I, I always just thought it was one of those things that was like, you were you were like, ah, this is a, a unique short name, but I'm going to pronounce it however I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, also like super secret actually to the, well, hundreds, some people who are tuned in. I'm actually in the process of rebranding away from using my own Twitter handle to oh. a proper 
name for the website for the business because all of my customers come from Twitter and I would like to expand outside the Twitterverse. Sure. Yeah. Remove myself from the equation essentially. But yeah, <laughs> it's been, it's been so much fun just coming up with new products, more mugs, more stickers um, that, you know, they could get the, the get commit history, um, blankets, the pillows, and most recently face masks because it's 2020 and obviously I'm going to create face masks. I yeah. actually have one downstairs. Nice. Nice. Very cool. I saw, I think I saw some like prototypes or, or photos or something yeah. that you were posting. They look, they look like they're going to be super fun. They're, um, they're really great. I'm, I'm, I have a really small head, like I have an, an ab abnormally small head, so it's too big for me, but it fits my husband just fine. So he's just, you know, walking around with like a get commit history face mask. That's great. So good. My my partner has a she's like very small. And so she keeps buying the extra small face masks and they like fall off of her face. So she's moved <laughs> on to buying children's face masks. And that's the only ones that will stay on her. That's, that's my problem. So two things, I have a small head and also I have very little cartilage in my nose. Oh. So super weird fact about me. Um, when I visit some of my friends, the first thing they want to do is poke my nose because this is going to be super weird. And I'm going to do it live, but I can literally push my nose in and there's wow. like nothing there. And the only reason why it doesn't go in more is because I had a, a bar surgically put in my nose. Oh, just dang. to keep it up. <laughs> so, so when you were when you were a, a baby, I guess then you had like ba like a like a nose. You could literally like honk your nose. When people are just like boop, and my nose just goes right in. They're like, <laughs> oh, did I just break something? <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Okay, excellent. That's great. Teaching um, the world about my fun habits, my fun, you know, features. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Bobby, Bobby tables in the chat says that's a deep boop. That is indeed a, uh, I mean, that's like the, the boop is good. That's a good boop. That's a good boop. Yeah. It's, you know, when people are like, again, super weird facts about me, people are like, can you touch your tongue to your nose? So also I learned last year that it is like, they are supposed to like clip your tongue if they can't extend out far enough when you're a baby. And that never happened to me. Like they never did that. And it oh. wasn't until last year when I was at the dentist and they're like, you had braces, but your teeth are like, push it out. Um, apparently because of that, like I swallow my face, like goes, my, my tongue pushes my teeth forward. This is not super relevant to Shopify. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> as a result, I, I have a short tongue span as well, but I can just like push my nose down and. <laughs> <laughs> Loopholes, nobody said you couldn't push your nose down. <laughs> No, I, it's a cheat code. So, you know, <laughs> what I have to do. <laughs> All right. So that is incredible. Um, I think that could be maybe your next book is on uh, on how to, you know, cheat the system of, of tongue to nose touching. Um, Deep boop. Life cheats. <laughs> the facial Konami code says the chat. Excellent. <laughs> um, OK, so so when we're talking about e-commerce, like I think there there's a really interesting kind of trajectory that I've seen over the last years of my career, um, where I remember in the early 2000s when I was first building sites that everybody wanted to sell things online, but it was a nightmare. Like you, yeah. there was not just the part of, of being able to list products or, or have, you know, something listed, but then you had to figure out how to charge for it. And so there was this PCI compliance and can you keep credit cards safe and and what do you do with the money once you get it and how do you get it to your bank and it was just, like it was so bad that I remember when I when I was running my agency and people would come to me and ask for e-commerce and I would say it's not worth it <laughs> it's not <laughs> like the amount of hassle that this is going to be you're you're going to regret this um and I feel like it's the opposite now now I'm like yeah, yeah do it do it today like get it go click this button you'll have a store um yep. what do you think changed or, or like what are the what were the the main hurdles that we've overcome that got us to where we can stand up so fast now i think having a third party handle the security side of things was really important mm -hmm. um i think it really started with paypal honestly um the first e-commerce sites that i was busy uh, building many many years ago just integrated a, like a paypal buy button and that was it they went through paypal to check out and then paypal took care of the transferring money to your bank um, and then along came Stripe and really opened things up to mm -hmm. the rest of the, you know, just the, the internet to be able to actually build out some kind of e-commerce functionality without having to handle two 
uh, handle the credit card transactions mm -hmm. because there are some interesting things that I've learned over time working in e-commerce for six years now. Basically, having an option like PayPal is really convenient because if people don't want to enter their credit card information in, they like they don't trust your site. It's never you know first time shopping there. They feel more comfortable buying via PayPal, mm -hmm. but. A lot of other people like myself, I have my credit card numbers handy through LastPass and I can just, you know, one click button and I'm ready to check out. Mm -hmm. um, so op these really opened up the the options for, for being able to offer some kind of transactional checkout mm -hmm. that somebody else was handling the heavy lifting for you. So you did not have to worry about the security there because that is one thing that I love about Shopify because I, I, I am not touching anybody's credit card information. You know, I, I used to work I, I worked retail briefly when I was in college. And the one day that the systems went down, we were literally, literally writing people's credit card numbers down on sheets oh. of paper so we can process oh, them no. later. Like there's so much wrong with this situation, but it's not my company. So I'm just gonna keep on doing what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for the subs, both uh, Ben and Andy, I appreciate it. I also saw uh, way before the show started, even Brett, uh, Brett subscribed. So thank you all for, for the subs. Um, enjoy those boop emojis. You you may have seen the boops falling from the ceiling. You are now capable of contributing to that chaos. UX Leap, holy crap, thank you so much. Um, and it is September right now, which means I guess you can get a discount on subscriptions. The longer you subscribe for, the cheaper they are. Uh, that's so cool. if that's a thing you want to do, you can do that. Um, holy crap, Jay Smurf, thank you so much. We are, we're, we're just getting it rolling here. We got the hype train going. We're already to level two. I feel like we're playing like a slot machine and we just keep on winning. So I know, this is going well. Oh, and then now we've got bits. Dang. Thank you, Jimena. Um, all right, Kelly. Yeah. We, uh, we are kind of, we've talked about what is possible now. I would really love to see this in action and I definitely want to make sure that we don't uh, have to kind of get into crunch mode to get something done. So okay. if you don't mind, let's switch over and uh, and start some coding. Let's do it. All yeah. right. So I'm going to move over into pairing view. And uh, if you don't already follow Kelly, make sure you go and do that. And you'll be able to uh, get all sorts of good jokes and whatever this picture was in support of. <laughs> um, and so I'm this pretty is sure the... that was to Emma about something. As usual, <laughs> I think, yeah, I think I, I I love watching you and Emma like banter on the internet. It's it's very much like having a window into somebody's DMs because you two are just like. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things, and every now and then we'll like we'll say what like we'll reply and be like, "Ooh, I hope that's not taken the wrong way." And of course, it's never taken the wrong way, but <laughs> it's just what we do. <laughs> I have a a. a we were my my manager um, Sarah Drasner and I are supposed to have a burger battle where she has talked this big game about sous vide burgers. She's like, my sous vide burgers are the best burgers in the world, and I'm like, cool. I'm gonna make a smash burger and wipe the floor with you. Um, <laughs> and so we we had this whole plan, and then the when the pandemic kicked off, we obviously didn't meet in person to ever battle this out. But so we've been talking trash about it for like a year now. <laughs> I love it. Keep and it up. We regularly like we start and then it escalates and then I'll say something and she doesn't immediately reply and I'm like, oh, that's it. I finally crossed the line. Like I'm fired. Like this. Is <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. So yeah, this is uh, this. So I, I've got the the store up online um, and then you have another. So this one you said is headless. So this is using Gatsby. So it's no longer headless. No longer so headless. OK, I, I shut down my site. If you visit my site now, it's just KVLLY.com. It's a view based Oops. site and it is the most basic site ever because I don't have time for much at the moment. That is the site. <laughs> Gorgeous. It's beautiful. So. Minimal. Nice and easy. Um, no, so this is a this is a Shopify store. This is going to be your more traditional Shopify store. So multiple products, multiple collections. Mm. Uh, this is using a theme called Flex from Out of the Sandbox. Okay. Um, so I have two stores. This the merch store is the primary store that most people are familiar with. Um, my second store is actually just selling my book, um, which is Start Freelancing Dot Today. And this is a, a basically a landing page that's been turned into a store that I use the Shopify buy button for. Mm. So, and that's I, this I one just, here. 
So if you click that, it actually takes you down to the buy section because it used to it used to take you to check oh, out, but nice. now I have an audiobook available. Cool. So you can choose which one. So clicking on one of these links would take you to Shopify's checkout with that already in, in your cart. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then this is the stuff that I think is really interesting is like these Shop Pay, Google Pay, like um, yeah. Shop Pay and Google Pay both store your, your information. And so you can check out without having to do like anything. Which is exactly very it's cool and very dangerous. <laughs> so Shop Pay is per, is cool in particular because it saves your your information not specific to the store but specific to Shopify. Mm -hmm. So if you visit another Shopify store and hit checkout, you enter your email address in there. They'll be like, "Hey, we recognize this information. We're going to text you a code, and it's just a six digit code. When you enter that in, it automatically takes you to the Shop Pay checkout." Um, don't click, I don't know if you've done this before, but don't click on shop pay at the moment. Otherwise people might see your information. Yeah. It'll show the, the address <laughs> and stuff, but I really like shop pay for, for multiple reasons. But one of the reasons that I really like it is that it uh, it also integrates like tracking and stuff. So oh, yeah. when you, when you buy, it's going to show like a map and in your address. And then when the thing tracks, it'll show the tracking information, not just as a, um, oh no. Oh, John, thank you so much. Okay. John just gifted uh, five subs, so we're going to hear a lot of wow. noise. Thank you That's so fun. much. Uh, welcome to the Boop crew. Ali Pixel, Jesse, Ashley, G Gang Elf, and Bobby Tables. Bobby, I thought you already had a sub. Now I'm, now I'm, now you're suspect. Um, <laughs> but yeah, spam those boops, everybody. Uh, take, take a lot of, take a lot of liberties with those. And remember, you've also got access to like the corgis. Um, so yes, so shop pay, uh, it, it's going to show you your tracking. It's, it keeps the things available between stores, which is amazing. Um, I, I am a, a big fan of this. And, uh, also, you know, if you're looking at freelancing, here you go, go make that happen. It's a good book. <laughs> I'm biased, but that's okay. So one, th one important distinction to make between shop pay and Shopify payments. Mm. So shop pay is that checkout experience. Shopify payments is basically a reskinned stripe for credit card transactions. Mm. So you use Shopify payments, you get slightly decreased credit card transaction fees. You get the fraud protection from Shopify, things like that, that that's the actual part of when, when customers are checking out and entering their credit card information. So if you're using Shopify payments, you can enable shop pay. Nice. Okay. I Just got it. I understand. Thing. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay. Um, well, cool. So if I want to build out a store, uh, yes. what would my first step be? So you have two options. If you're building a store for yourself that you're actually going to launch, I would go to shopify.com and create a new trial store. Uh, you have a 14 day free trial to get started. Just click that join Shopify button and you are all set. Um, however, if you're interested in building a development store, just kind of playing around with Shopify, or you want to build a store for a client, I recommend becoming a Shopify partner, which is on partners.shopify.com. Oh, nice. And okay, so let's look at partners.shopify.com. Yeah. And then you can join to become a Shopify partner. It's completely free. And what's really cool is when you launch stores, you get rev share for the monthly payment that the, the merchants are actually paying to Shopify. So, so you get 20% of whatever they're paying every single month through the life of their Shopify store. That's very cool. Um, I, I really like that too, as a model, because one of the things that I've noticed is that as a, especially in, in a role like yours, where you're in, you're running an agency, you are consistently bringing in new people and kind of setting them up with things. And one of the hardest parts about agency or freelancing work is recurring revenue, because a lot of times with, with agencies and with freelancing, you are trading time for money and you exactly. only have so much time and there's only so much somebody will pay per hour. Um, so it kind of puts a cap on, but if you can do things like revenue share or affiliate sales, it helps to add that buffer so that you have the extra money around, um, so that you don't have to sell every single minute that you're awake. You can, you can have exactly. some vacations and things like that. Yeah. Uh, so one of the other cool things about Shopify is if you don't want to do theme development, which is what we're going to be looking at, uh, you can also do app development. And a Shopify app is basically like if you're familiar with WordPress, it's like a WordPress plugin. So it's extending the functionality of the Shopify store, whether it's in Shopify's admin or it's 
actually impacting the storefront, like a product reviews app or an Instagram feed, or I mean, there are all kinds of things that exist, but you can create a Shopify app and connect it to your, your partner dashboard. And then if you apply to actually have it listed in the Shopify app store, you get a certain percentage of everybody who purchases that app and is paying monthly to Shopify. So that's okay. really cool. Um, so I, I have created a new store. Uh, I had to create a password, which is why I did that off screen. And um, we are now, let me just save this so I don't lose it later. Yes. Okay. Um, am I already selling? I'm just playing around. That is, there is nothing more apt than, <laughs> than that. <laughs> Just playing around, but my annual revenue is over a million a month. <laughs> I don't know why I said annual and monthly, but that's cool. Um, Let's see. Um, what would other food and drink? How about that? There we go. And no, I'm not. Okay, can I skip this? Uh, okay, you might give not me, be able to. Okay. Give me a quick second. I'm just gonna put in my my info here. Um, cool. Oh, it's got autocomplete. That's really nice. So yes. when I started typing in my address, it it pulled up a list and then it autofilled all of those things for me. Yeah, it uses really the, nice. the Google Maps API to pull that information in. Really handy, especially on checkout too. Super so handy. also to talk about Shopify pricing while you're doing that a little bit. Um, so you can, if you're going through a development store through your Shopify partners account, and it has an unlimited free trial. So you can spend as long as you want building out the store. Um, as long as you're not, again, as long as you are not going to be using that dev store to sell your own products, you can use that into eternity. It's against the partner terms to launch a, a dev store for yourself, uh, to actually sell things on it because you get that rev share for your own store and they don't allow that. Sure. Um, if you're going to be paying for Shopify, the plans start at $29 a month and this gets you access to Shopify storefront, which you're going to see here. Um, it goes $29 a month to $79 a month to $299 a month. And then Shopify Plus, which is the enterprise level of Shopify, starts at $2,000 a month. There is a light Shopify plan as well. Mm -hmm. And that's only $9 a month, but you do not get access to the storefront. So that would mean that you're not actually using Shopify to run your store. You're only using it to manage the backend data. So your products, your collections and the transactions. So you can use Shopify's checkout, but not the actual shopping browsing experience. Okay. And would the light plan give you access to the API? Like if you were yes. going to do a, so if you wanted to build say a Gatsby site or a, a next site or a Nux site using Shopify as your e-commerce data, you could do that on the light plan for, for the, Nine nine ninety nine. What was it? Yeah, I I don't think the store for an API requires you to be on the twenty nine a month plan. Um, I'm hoping I'm not wrong about that. Storefront API. I have I don't see any information about it, so I assume it's fine. Yeah, it's, it seems looks like it maybe. Yeah, there's there's no actual like it would say. If you, as long as you can create a custom app in the light plan, that's all that matters. Cool. And they don't block apps, I don't think. So, yeah. yeah. So this this could be an option. Um, we, and we are not gonna do headless today. We're we're doing Shopify uh, storefront themes. Is that right? Yes, we're gonna do cool. Shopify theming on the storefront. Okay. So there may be a possibility for a follow up episode where we where we do it headless mode too. Yes, um, that would be a lot of fun. That would be super fun. So, okay, so let's let's take a look at this. We're we're using my free trial um, where I'm I have access to I assume everything right now. That's um, correct. And so we can kind of set up what we want to do. Let me maximize this window so that we can see a little more. So what you're looking at here is a Shopify admin. And this is where the merchant is going to actually be going in, seeing what orders were placed, creating products. Um, if, you're, if you have any apps installed, you're interacting with the apps directly through here as well. So I think it's probably useful to, for us to go ahead and just create a product so we have some product to work with. Okay. Um, so let's do Corgi with spaghetti. Um, and then I think what we can do is. I hope there's a product or a picture somewhere on the internet. Oh, I've I've got this. I'm I'm ready. So okay. I see a question about how much maintenance is required. 
Uh, the beauty of it is Shopify is uh, a SaaS product. So they're handling all updates, all security updates on their end. So you don't have to do anything. The only maintenance that would be required is if a, if a client wants to install another app or make changes to their theme that requires custom coding. And we'll get into the theme structure in a moment here so you can see what can be changed and what can't be changed without actually going into the code. There's a lot that you can do without actually touching code at all. I've decided that I'm going to Photoshop <laughs> some spaghetti into this. I love it. Spaghetti factory. Spaghetti factory, yeah. Um, how about? I feel like that one will work well because it has a transparent background. That's true. It definitely would. I'm. I. I so wish that it enticing. had some sauce. Like. Yeah. Where are you at? There's spaghetti no... without sauce is a sad. sad spaghetti with sauce. Here we go. This one's got some sauce. So let's open the image. Perfect. It's an eye stock, so it's going to look super cheesy, which I think is exactly what we're after. And then we can paste it right in here. Perfect. Oh, Oops. Beautiful. Right? Here's our corgi eating spaghetti. And then we can just cut this out like a Photoshop Pro. Are you keeping the fork in there? Of course I'm keeping okay. the fork in there. How else would he eat? <laughs> <laughs> this is a good visual. <laughs> okay, so here's that. And then wait, to mask, do I put it on top or bottom? Put it on bottom. Nailed it. Okay, uh, so here is of art. our perfect corgi. I will export this. Okay. In the UK, I found access to Shopify really poor. Does anyone know if this is being addressed? Can you elaborate? Um, I mean, Shopify is fully available in the UK. What do you reckon for a person who is just starting a store where they're not certain about what revenue they're generating at the moment? If you are just starting a store, your revenue is probably zero. The numbers that were on that, that form starting, they're completely irrelevant. You can even skip that step. You don't have to fill it out. It's mainly a Shopify being curious about your life and what you're doing. Okay. Oh. So pricing section here, the price is what the customer is actually going to be paying. The compare at price is if the item is on sale, you're going to enter in a number that's higher than what the customers are currently paying. So you say oh. like it's on sale 50% off. So you put 20 there. Exactly. Um, Shopify does handle chart or taxes for you as well. If you're selling virtual products, Actually, just for anything in taxes, consult a CPA. I am yes, not a CPA. Of course. Um, you can enter in the cost per item as well. So if you knew what your so you can calculate what your margins are for reports later. You can skip that if you don't want to put well, anything in there. Th this is actually really interesting because what this would be is like if we were gonna print this as a poster, let's say these were gonna cost us like two eighty five per poster, then we can see whether or not this is actually making us any money. Exactly. Um, which I think is that's important because especially when you uh, a CPA is a, a certified public accountant. That's right. Yeah, uh, an accountant. Um, but one of the things that gets really tricky when you're selling products is that the price of the product is not the only expense. So if you're going to spend $4 to make a t-shirt and you charge $5 for it, you might think, oh, I'll make a dollar per shirt. But you also have to pay someone to ship it or you have to pay time. Um, you have to pay for shipping itself. There's like packing materials. There's overruns and returns and all these things that kind of factor into the cost of the item. So yeah. you have to sell it for like, you have to sell it for a product or for a profit or else you're going to end up paying money to run your store. Yeah. There's also what's called the cost of acquisition as well. So how much are you paying to actually get that customer to your store to place that order? So mm -hmm. if you're running Facebook ads, for example, that costs money too. Yes. So all these things you take into consideration. Um. Okay. So we've got the option to do inventory. Um, yes, and Shopify does have built-in inventory tracking. So if you wanted to say there are only, I only have 20 of these Corgi eating spaghetti posters, you can say track quantity of 20. When the item goes out of stock, it would say sold out unless you check that box saying continue selling when out of stock. Cool. And this is, we're gonna pretend this is a, a physical poster. So we'll say it is a physical product and it weighs 0.2 pounds. Um, which is probably way more than a poster would actually weigh, but. <laughs> a very, very nice 1. poster. 1. Yeah, it's, that is some 
thick cardstock. <laughs> <laughs> um, customs information. Wow, this is this is. There's so much in here. There's so much in here, and honestly, a lot of these things are things that you can skip. So yeah. unless okay. you're selling internationally, you know what's happening, then skip it. Again, okay. accountants will help with this. Okay, so variants. This Whoa. is basically what what are the product options. They call them variants in here. So if you have, let's say you're offering this poster in three sizes, small, medium, and large. If you check this box, you can see the option is size, and then you just enter in the words small, comma, medium, comma, large. Mm. Um, you can have up to three options on a product. You can have up to 100 variants on a product. So okay. if you have, you know, this, this is available in three sizes and... 30 or in, in 10 colors you have 30 total variants three times 10 if you're doing you know five sizes five or five colors and i don't know five glittery options whatever you start to notice that the number of variants you're going five times five times five it, it becomes a lot so shopify caps the variant count at 100 for a given product um for the most part that works because if you're offering your customers too many options it mm -hmm. becomes a little bit overwhelming so you see the three variants here, small, medium, large, and now you're going to have 60 total in stock because it's 20 in stock for each of them. So, okay, we just upped the price for medium and large as well. That's right. Got to pay The last thing on here is SEO. So Shopify actually does do built-in search engine optimization. Oh, that's cool. What it's doing is it's pulling the product's title and the product's description and popping them right into the title and meta description. If you click edit website SEO, you can actually change that to something that's a little bit more optimized for Google. Oh. Um, it's important to note that the page title and description that you write here aren't actually beneficial for SEO. This is just what the user sees on Google. So you want to make it as enticing as possible to get your customer, get the customer to click on the button, click on the link to actually go to your site. Super enticing. In, in question, was it Shopify? <laughs> I love this. Uh, was it Shopify that supports uploading a 3D model of product? Yes. So they uh, they recently offered support for 3D models. They also offer support for AR and VR, which I Ooh. think is the coolest thing. So they, they gave a demonstration of buying a stroller. And let's say a stroller that fits two children, you need to make sure it fits in your house. You need to make sure it fits on the sidewalk. So you can actually take, take your phone and it'll show the, the stroller on your phone and you can see how it looks in your space and how it looks on the sidewalk before purchasing it. Really, really handy. That's really cool. Um, okay. So I think just for the sake of time, we can go ahead and save this product. Okay. Um, things Do I need on the to right. care about any of this? No, you don't have to. That's if we're going to create multiple collections and you know sort by product type, and I don't think we have time to do any of that. So. Yeah, we, we can look at an example of that later on to show. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So click on the I next to online store. It's Here. under sales channels on the left. Yeah. So you have a store. It already pulled the title saying Corgi's eating spaghetti, and all of this is placeholder information. So it already it installs a Shopify theme called, uh, is it launch or debut that's installed now? I honestly don't remember which now, um, but this is what we're gonna be using. So if you click on catalog, you can see your product. Uh, sorry, I'm pausing my notifications because yes, somebody you. just debut. started. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool, here we go. Hey, look, okay. and look. All these things happen. So it, exactly. it shows that it's on sale. It, uh, let's see, it shows me small, medium, and large. Oh, you know what I want to do? I want to make one of these out of stock so we can see it. Ooh, let me go, let me go make this one out of stock. So there's no medium. Okay. Hi, Thomas. Thomas and I are doing a Kelly plus Kelly, uh, four part Twitch stream on Shopify theme development. So we did our, our first intro uh, last week and next week we're getting into a build process. Oh, very cool. Um, I think I did it wrong. Nope, you did it right, did you oh, say Oh, here it? it is. Now it shows me sold okay. out. Yes, but so small. it automatically updates when you select a different variant as well. That is really slick. So here's what we did. Yes, also not crashing. Here's what we did. We created a Shopify store. We created a product. You can actually go through and add this to the cart. You're not going to be able to check out because we haven't connected a payment provider yet. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but you able you're able to see the cart here, and the checkout button is technically there as well. Nice. So. Okay, so for now, I have to pick a plan. I have to edit a theme, but that's okay. Exactly. I mean, we like this is really really interesting because of how quickly this all happened. Yeah. Um, so you get up and running very quickly. Yeah. So we have this beautiful website that has absolutely just placeholder content on the homepage and nothing else. So I assume we want to make it look a little nicer. Yeah. So let's go back into the Shopify admin. Here? Yes. And click on online store next to where that I was. Okay. So online store is considered a sales channel. And this is what you get access to on that 29 a month plan of hire. Other sales channels are going to be things like Facebook, um, Amazon. Um, oh, there we go. Yep, uh, point of sale if you wanted to sell in store. The buy button is what I use on the Star oh. Freelancing Today website. It just so, occurred yes. to me that you could use this for retail. Exactly. So oh. there is a Shopify app that you can install for point of sale and you can use it. Like I I could I could pull it up on my iPad if it was near me just so you can see exactly how it functions. So you yeah. can add this point of sale sales channel for free. That's super cool. Okay. Yeah. And then, yeah, we can do Amazon, eBay, Pinterest. Can't do wholesale. So to explain how this works, like uh, you can, uh, the question, you can sell stuff on Amazon via Shopify. So what it does is you can actually create Amazon listings from the Shopify admin using the sales channel. And when somebody places an order on Amazon, it decreases the quantity available on the Shopify store as well. So you're never going to run out of stock. That is the, that's like the hardest part, right? Is like when you have multiple sales channels, you know, if you, it, usually it's fine. You have, you know, a hundred in stock and you're making like one or two sales a day and it's, it's fine. But then you exactly. have something that gets popular and you accidentally sell like 50 more than you had. And it's like, oh God, do I have to refund? Do I have to talk people into waiting six weeks for this to come back in stock? Like, what do <laughs> Never I do? Never a fun conversation to have. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, okay, this is, a, I'm so, I'm so excited right now. And look, I can even, um, I'm going to disable the password so that I can share this with y'all. Uh, so that you can go look at it because this is live now like this is this is the shop it's up um so and and as you may have seen the the password oh here, you're gonna have to you have to yeah okay you can enter the password there. fine you can put the password in <laughs> um <laughs> so that'll let you uh that'll let you go look at the store if you want and then i'll i'll select the plan i guess uh well if we get there so for now um all right, so what we're going to go now? back into themes. So just a, a side note, Shopify is also a content management system, so you can create informational play- pages. You can create a blog on here. You can have everything under one roof, which is really great for SEO. So we are going to customize this theme now. Um, so the, the, thank you. Debut is what is actually installed by default when you uh, create a new Shopify store. So we're going to click that Customize button. Okay. And what this is going to load is the Shopify theme customizer. So there are two sections on here. There's sections and there's theme settings. Theme settings are gonna be the global changes you're making, changes to fonts, changes to colors, adding your social media things, adding adding your favicon, all those kinds of things. On the uh, sections, this is where it's going to be customized based on whichever page you're currently viewing in this Shopify theme customizer here. So you see those little six dots on the right? You can actually mm-hmm. drag and drop the, the things to go in a different order. These cool. also live update. So let's click on, let's click into that image with text overlay as soon as you drop it somewhere. Okay, so we can now update things immediately on here and they will they will update you know once it actually syncs up. Um, if you scroll down, you'll see some uh, some text fields. So what we're doing is we're creating basically a hero and you can upload your own uh, image in there as well. And you see on the, like above where you see the theme preview, you see three little icons there. The desktop one is the one that's selected right now. On the left, you see uh, a little mobile icon. On the right, it shows like full screen without those theme settings. So you can actually get a a preview of what your theme looks like uh, on mobile devices as well. Sorry, can you say where that was again? So you're just over it. So just above the preview, you see those little three icons. Oh yeah. Yep. That one, that first one on the left is going to be the mobile. Ooh, that's super cool. Right. 
So you can come in here and you can go and change all of these all of these sections are built into the theme to start. Um, so let's let's back out of this uh, theme section here. And we're going to scroll down to Featured Collection. So let's click on that. Featured Collection. And select Collection Homepage. Hey, nice. so it just worked. Now we have our product preview there. Yes, so the homepage collection is automatically created for you. So you can, as you create more collections, you create more products, you're able to choose which collections you want to feature here. Again, you can change that heading from featured collection to, you know, uh, the only product we have in the store or, you know, whatever you wanted to say. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice on the Start Freelancing Today website, all these sections you're seeing are very familiar from what you're seeing in this template because I'm literally customizing the debut theme for my own store. Mm -hmm. No sense in building everything from scratch if all this information already exists. Yeah. And, you know, save some time there. But I think there's a level here that we wanted to actually do some development work. So you want to actually build a Shopify section really quickly? Yeah, of course I do. Let's do this. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and hit save on the top right. Okay. Um, should I turn off these other sections? Um, like, can if you we, want. Can we just yeah, do you that? Yeah, can, you can just hide them. Yep. Oh, amazing. Look at it go. We have this beautiful... We just built... Look, that's a, we could ship this. If we had posters to sell, we could literally ship this right now. Exactly. And it would just work. That's amazing. Like, that is really, really cool that that just works like that. Okay. So, let's talk about Shopify Theme Kit. Okay. So Shopify does uh, not have a proper okay. Here we go. local development environment. So what we need to do is we need to connect locally to your store with your theme that you want to make changes to. So every time you save a file, uh, you know, make a change to a file and save it, it'll automatically upload that file and it'll reflect on the website. Mm, okay. So we are going to start by installing Shopify theme kit and they have installation instructions for both Mac and Windows on here. Okay. My favorite part where I just start copy pasting copy things into my terminal works. and hoping for the best. Yep. And while we're doing that, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so I can see both. Always updating homebrew. Oh, no. Oh, do we have time for this? <laughs> Hopefully it'll be fast enough. <laughs> I guess I just updated this yesterday, so hopefully, yeah, it yeah. was fast. Okay, okay, so now we're going to actually install. It's been a while since we've had that. <laughs> Okay, so at this point we've installed ThemeKit. So in order to use ThemeKit, we need to create a private app. So go okay. back to your store. This one is my store. Okay. Yep. Um, click on the little Shopify icon in the top left. This is going to take you back to the admin. Got it. And we're going to click on apps. So everything on the Shopify app store is considered a public app. And this is going to be the apps that you install from they've you know been verified by Shopify that they could they they work and they're not going to you know break your store and all that hopefully. Um, but there are also private apps, which is what we're going to be using for development. So it's it's that text below working with the developer on your shop make manage private apps. So you're going to click on that. Shush. Oh no. Shush. Uh oh. Oh. I oh, have you have to, to enable it. Okay. <laughs> I thought That's we were new. in trouble. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Shopify devs, yeah, you have to warn me about these changes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so because they use the Shopify API, they're subject to the license in terms of use. Uh, I'm going to assume you've read that and check that button. Of course <laughs> I've read that. It's my favorite Every bedtime word. story. <laughs> Um, let's see, any staff or collaborator accounts can create and edit private apps, okay. Basically, anybody who has access to the app section on your store can access all private apps as well. Keeping so, these API keys secure. Okay. This is a you know pretty typical whenever you're creating an app that has access to APIs. Um, you only want to give it access to what you actually need. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you know, you, you can use the Shopify API to, um, 
you know, create products and create orders and delete customers and delete all kinds of things. And we don't want to do that. Yeah. So we want to, okay, so we're going to use the admin API. So we don't actually need access to products. So we're going to switch that to no access. Okay. And then click on show inactive admin API permissions and search for theme. It's just faster to do it that way. There are a lot of API permissions on here. Wow. Look at all these. This is amazing. Okay. So you can so really get themes. granular with what you want to have access to. So we're going to do read and write. Okay. And we're do going to scroll down. Else? Nope. So there are two different APIs here. There's the admin API, which is what we're going to be using to actually make theme updates. And the admin API is where you're going to be creating products and creating orders and everything I just mentioned. The storefront API is if you're doing a headless build, you want to give, this gives you access to that, all, all that storefront data. So you can actually display it elsewhere. So we're not using it in this case. So you can go ahead and hit save. Oh, is this going to show a key? You're about to create a private hit. app, generate an API key. You should only share this. Okay, I'm pulling this off screen. Nobody yeah. look. <laughs> You'll see once you save it, the password is is hidden, but you can copy it. Um, you're going to want to enter. Oh, okay. In I'm going to. So let me show this uh, because yeah, it is so you can useful. See it. So okay. it it created my private app. Um, I just gave it a name that I would recognize, and it gives me a public key and then a password. Yep. Um, and then the shared secret, I'm going to have to roll this, I think. Uh, the shared, yeah, shared secret you're not actually using anywhere. So you're using the okay. password. That's okay. what you're going to be using to connect to the API or connect to theme kit. Um, so you can copy it. You can click that little copy button. And and then once you're actually running through the setup for connecting a store, uh, you're going to want to hide that because you're going to have to enter in the API key at that point or the password. OK, okay. got it. Okay. Um, OK, so, uh, so, so this is available and, to us. This is available. So yeah, go ahead and copy that password. If you haven't done that already, Cappy. Yep. All right. So go back to the theme kit instructions. Uh, this one. One of these. Okay. So we're going to get started on go to commands on the left side. Okay. And we're going to go to, let's do configure. And so this, assuming this worked, then I can just do. Oh, I jumped ahead. Like this? theme yes so we're going to do um create a cool okay so it's it's working the way that we expected that's all it good. is thomas which one did we do for the last stream i honestly don't remember <laughs> this is something i've like i do it just like without thinking it's like driving a car and okay i think while i drive too but um <laughs> I just forget which commands I wanted. Just like <laughs> my fingers do magic. Um, okay, let me just pull up the kit. On my end, configure an existing theme. That's what we're going to do. Okay, so go to getting started again. Here. Yeah, and then click configure an existing theme. So we already have a theme that's created. We're going to use that. So. Got it. We are going to let's see. I do theme get oh. list, uh, and then the dash p is going to be your API password. So you're going to want to pull that off screen. You know what I'm going to do real quick. I think let me do a quick thing. I think I can put this into my environment so I can use it as an environment variable. Okay. Um, let's do like. I uh, also dress for the occasion, so just so we all know, I'm on brand. Um, okay, I'm trying to remember, I don't, I'm very bad at bash. <laughs> Same. Um, let's see if I can do this. Shopify API. Nope. Um, okay, so whatever I've done was wrong. Do, uh, <laughs> do you just want to create the? Uh, Let me make sure I didn't just like break my whole environment. Okay, we're good. Okay, so I d at least didn't break my whole, whole environment. Um, so good. what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this theme get dash dash list uh, and then dash p is going to be my password. If you want to save a step for not having to actually run the list command, we can actually grab the theme ID directly from Shopify. Oh, cool. Okay. How would I do okay. So go that? back to where to the online store view that just shows um, 
one of these windows. Where was I? Oh, we're getting, we're becoming, we're turning into a million tabs here. I think it's Weird. the last one. Oh, no, not that here? one. Here? Aha. Yeah. Okay. okay. So go to online store. This one? Yep. And then you're going to click customize again. Here. Yep. And you're going to see a uh, an ID pop up in the URL. So that's what you're going to use. Okay. So instead so of list, you're then, going to remove going to list use dash this one? T. Yep. Okay. So no. Okay. So I need. Now this is uh, going to download the theme from Shopify. So make sure you're in the the directory you want to be in. Is it going to create a directory? Or is it going to install in this directory? Yeah. It's it's going to create a folder inside there theoretically. Okay, that's okay. That that part is <laughs> again. Okay. We've built our own build process at this point, so. Um. So I have, corgis eating spaghetti. Spaghetti. Theme get. My Shopify. Equals API dot com. password. And then the T, is the theme. Doing it. It's going to work. Downloading a bunch of stuff. As soon as it stops showing my password on screen, I'm going to uh, pull it back over. In the meantime, we wait. All the times when I wish I had j jokes that I can just pull out. I know. I usually just do an awkward dance. I usually like create elevator music, and it's terrible. So. <laughs> I, yeah, I, as as you have heard, we have uh, elevator music on command. <laughs> <laughs> um, almost there, ninety one percent. Ryan's ready with jokes and chat. Ninety nine, a hundred. Okay, what? so let me. It might be FedEx again. What? It might be FedEx again. The door. Someone's at the door. Oh, they ring it. They ring it. And, yeah. All right. They leave it. They leave it. Okay. Uh oh. Walmart, I can easily order from there. Oh, nice. What'd you do? Uh, well, I put it in the wrong folder. You were right. I should have. <laughs> um, Small details. Yeah. You can just drag it somewhere. Well, <laughs> I put it into a folder with a whole bunch of other stuff. So I think I might just re-clone it. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, let's see. Let me get into this, and we're just gonna run this one more time, and hopefully. Angie, if you're still tuning in, uh, thank you for posting that screenshot of me poking my nose. That was a uh, perfect timing. <laughs> okay, it's going faster this time because we've already downloaded everything, so it's mostly cached. We are already at 50%, so just bear Hooray. with me. Uh, what do you get when you cross an elephant with a rhinoceros? What do you get? I think I know this one. Or yeah, Ryan. Hell if I know. Huh? No, Kelly doesn't care at all about that joke. Oh, I'm sorry. It was the work thing. <laughs> The government keeps calling me about the loan I didn't accept. Oh, fun. Okay, we are at, come on, come on, come on, 99%. You can do it. LFI now. That's good. I, I just caught up now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I never claim to be on top of things. What, why it's frozen at 99%. I'm, I am concerned. No, stop. Uh, the th yeah, so it, this is a question. Is the theme cloning, that's pulling everything with that's the correct. assets API? Yep. Okay. All right. Come on, come on. It's great that they have Shopify developers and developer advocates in this chat, so I can just kind of like sit back and tell people what to do and not answer anybody's questions. Why are you frozen on me? Come on, friend. Okay, okay, we got it. We got it. Okay, we got, got it. it. Perfect. Okay. okay. So I'm going to pull this back over and we will just open this up in VS Code. Cool. 
Okay, so this is the theme structure. Don't open that config file. That contains your API password that we're okay. avoiding. Won't do that. It contains all the information that you need. You can create multiple development environments, can, you know, change which theme is active on there, et cetera. So the rest of the theme structure is, this is basically what it is. So you've got your assets folder. This contains your, your spreadsheets or <laughs> spreadsheets, your style sheets, your JavaScript, any kind of images that are uploaded, that kind of stuff goes here. No, um, so give me one, sorry, I'm gonna. Okay. Do a quick thing. Uh, I have everything ignored in the top level folder to not commit those. And so it was dimming everything, which has made it really hard to see. So let me reopen it now that I've, there we go. Now we can see. Awesome. Um, okay. There we go. All right. The config file contains what are going to be your theme settings and the sections. So that's what we were just kind of playing with. Um, those contain like what you actually selected. So the settings schema is that theme settings tab. Uh, the settings data is all of the settings that were used, including the theme settings and the sections. It's oh, the, cool. All of the information there. It's, oh, it's a JSON format. It's pretty straightforward. Um, layout contains your theme.liquid file, which we're going to pull up just to you know play around with. And then gift card.liquid. Shopify does offer support for offering gift cards as well. And then the cool. password.liquid file, which is what everybody saw when they tried to access the store by entering that password. Cool. OK, very cool. Um, yes. And then we've got, should, as Thomas said, I should clarify section settings are within the section files themselves. Um, the settings data does contain the data that's actually set within the sections within the theme customizer. So I'm just that, drawing you a map. Yeah, I got you. Um, and so this is, there's a whole bunch of tons uh, of things. Yeah. yeah. And the labels are all localized, which is very, very cool. Um, and also very, Kind of hard to parse. So this, yeah. it, it, my, my suspicion here is that it's probably best to do this part through Shopify. No, like so you UI. actually still do it through here. Um, okay. When you're starting a theme from scratch, it doesn't have all this localization. Mm. If, you, if you if you open the locales folder, you can see um, more information about like the language settings. There's a ton, a ton of locales of in here, which yeah. is great. Like so, the, the this store is by default going to be available globally. Like in, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So next folder here, next directory here is sections. So these are going to be what you just played with on the homepage, dragging and dropping those different sections and plain settings, but also sections that are linked to each template. So uh, like the footer.liquid file, or not footer.liquid, sorry, that's a bad example. Like product.liquid is a template file. And inside there, you're going to see reference to a Shopify section called product template.liquid. Here. So this is the section that's product uh, product dash template dot liquid. Um, if you go, so that just contains all, uh, scroll all the way to the bottom of the, the file. And there are all the sections. So these are the these are the theme settings specifically for the product page. Oh, I get it. And so when we're to to kind of map that a little bit, if we're in, click on um, home page at the the little drop down um, above the logo name. Yeah, and go to product pages. You see and that so, product pages section? Yes. Those are the settings you're seeing within that file. So we've got like. So if you search the word quantity, for example, you should be able to find it. If I can, oh, can't spell it though. <laughs> You'll have to click through a few times. Yeah. It's so show here's quantity the selector. Yeah. So sections. there's referencing it. And then the definition is down here. There it is. So we've got our label. So the label is how it appears in the theme settings being show quantity selector. The ID, of course, is the unique ID for that specific setting. The type is going to be, in this case, it's checkbox. You can have text, you can have text area, rich text, image, color, product, collection, all kinds of fun things. Um, Shopify's documentation for this is super, super detailed and really mm -hmm. helpful for understanding Shopify sections. Um, and then you can set a default value if you wanted to, um, all kinds of things. So nice. Yeah. Default. If you go to um, on the on your sidebar, scroll past the sections directory. Next, you have snippets. So snippets are going to be uh, smaller, like think components, like a React component or a view component. Um, smaller things that are going to be most likely reusable. Got it. So, yeah. So, the, so sort of like um, like a, a 
what you would think of as a short code in in WordPress or a, a component in React or Vue, where this is just yeah. kind of some some kind of packaged up reusable template that we yeah. can okay. Very cool. Um so cool. Let's do um hey mods, can you check the chat for me? Uh <laughs> can you so and Nikki, you asked a question about uh getting these changes live we're gonna get there so so stick yeah. with us so okay let's go ahead and run theme watch okay. so if you want to run it directly in here or if you uh, want to yeah let's it. do it in here we'll do it right okay. in here theme watch so now oh this is a live do i need to do i need to do yeah, this allow live flag okay yeah this is a, a new update Usually you're not making changes to the live theme. You're doing, you're making changes to an unpublished theme. Okay. So now let's go into theme.liquid. So that was under the layouts file. Actually, it's uh, the top one that you see up there. Or layouts directory. Sorry, I was reading the chat. Can you say that one more time? <laughs> uh, go ahead and open up theme.liquid. Theme.liquid in here. Yep. So this is going to be the base structure of your store. So the HTML, head tags, body tag, everything like that is in here. So go ahead and scroll through the page a little bit. Okay. Go and scroll through the code here. And so this is, um, the, these are liquid templates. So like we're, we're able to include smaller pieces and, and stuff so, like yes. that. So yes, so CSS variables and social meta tags, is our, those are examples of snippets. Got it. So the base front end of the base Shopify theme, you're going to see your basic front end languages, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And then you also see Liquid here. Liquid's a Ruby-based language that's been developed over time by Shopify. Um, and this is really, it's to, to me, I mean, of course I've been doing this for six years now. To me, it's a very readable kind of language to kind of parse your Shopify data. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And, and Liquid is something that was developed by Shopify, right? Like it's a, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of made. It's it's used by other other libraries as well, but Shopify has really built its own liquid. Nice. Okay. Cool. So so here's the we body. Officially, really, yes, we've officially reached the body. So a couple of things that are going on here. Um, you see a section header and section footer. So these are the examples of Shopify sections that were in that sections directory, and you also see content for layout. And what this means is it's de depending on whatever page you're viewing, Shopify is going to display the appropriate information for that page. So you never have to touch anything there. Just for fun, let's go ahead and add some text somewhere on the site. Um, let's add it above that main tag. Above it? Above it, just just like an H1 tag saying hello or whatever. Okay, okay. and go I ahead saved and save it. That. Oh boy, I just formatted I just... everything. Okay, um, we can go look at the store, right. yeah, which was this. out here. Yep. You need and to refresh it. Refresh. Oh, look hello, chat. Immediately live. Yeah. That is slick. So, okay. Um, so you'll see, uh, I see questions about the, the structure of, of liquid tax, tags. Also, let me put in, um, Shopify.dev, put that in the notes, and Shopify cheat sheet is a really, really handy cheat sheet that Shopify built. Where was I? Here it is. Which contains the different the different tags that uh, that you can actually use across the site, including like the iteration tags and the operators and different types and control flow tags and all the all the things. Mm-hmm. And I think liquid is one of those things that it starts out looking pretty confusing. And then after you've done it a few times, it starts to feel pretty straightforward. Um, it's, you know, it, it just introduces some new like characters, like the double curly brace for, for variables and stuff like that. Um, exactly. It's, it's pretty nice to, to use once you get the feel for it. This is also what I use for like, if you build an 11 D site, for example, um, liquid is one of the, the templating options. So I tend to use it mostly because these docs are so good. Uh, yeah. that I, I don't have to think very hard about getting it to work. Um, cool. Okay. okay, so we have 
I'm, I'm so, so happy that this I'm is going to working. answer some questions that are showing up right now. Yes. Um, let me go one question. It's not good to do changes directly on a site on a live site. Is there any provision in Shopify for that? So first off, when you run theme watch, you saw that that it, it warned you and you had to allow the live changes to the site. Mm -hmm. Second, Shopify actually allows you to create multiple multiple themes. Only one is published on the site. The rest are unpublished. So you can just reference an unpublished themes ID to make changes to that one. And you can preview the theme as you need. And you never have to worry about overriding something that's actually existing on the live site. Once you're ready to publish it, then you actually just hit actions, publish and publish that theme. And then- so, Yeah, okay. So so here then, if I were to like, should we show that real quick? Just adding another theme? Yeah, go ahead and click on the little Shopify icon again. Shopify icon, themes. Okay, so um, go to, instead of, I mean, I guess we can just install another theme. Go to explore free themes, just to pull up another one. I also see questions about scaffolding. Um, so we went through installing theme kit on here. Reference to Slate is something that Shopify built. That was a like basically an opinionated framework for building Shopify themes. Um, it is no longer supported, um, uh, rip. I miss it. Rip. Um, we've since built our own uh, build process. And next week, uh, Thomas and I are doing a uh, an episode on Twitch here. An episode. I just do podcasts. I don't know what they're called. Twitch streams. There we go. We're doing a stream on uh, basically going through the build process. process. What's and I'll be the showing you our that? build process. Um, I think it's twitch.tv slash Shopify devs. I also promised my uh, at the sh at the first Shopify Partner Town Hall earlier this year that I would share my uh, build process, and I haven't done it yet. So I will officially be sharing it next next week. Nice, nice. Okay, so I have. All right, so I have a theme. Okay. Um, we have debut, and I just okay. added this, so, so we can, can see, preview. Yeah, you can preview that theme, and you can see exactly how it works. And of course, there's no information here as far as your pictures or anything like that. But if you go to the catalog, you'll see your product there. And this is different from you can see like this one shows the sale up at the top right. Uh, it's got some different fonts and settings. Um, but it in general, like, it, you know, it just works. And this is a I'm in a preview. Yes. So the URL structure that you see in the address bar is the exact same as it would be on your live store. So the only way that you know that you're previewing a theme is that bottom bar saying you're previewing minimal. So if you want to get back to viewing the live theme, you'd click close preview. If you want to share this preview with like a client, you click that share preview button and it generates a, a unique Shopify URL to view your site with this specific theme. Nice. So that's really powerful. So so basically what you're saying is like if, if you were to like let's say we we had this theme and we wanted to um, make modifications, we could just duplicate this and upload it as a new theme, and then use the the watch tool for the new the uploaded theme ID and have like exactly. a dev version that we could send. So so that would be a workflow that we could use to let exactly. clients see the changes without actually having to publish them. Yeah, we we unless we're doing like an immediate hot fix that needs to be done, we're never touching the live theme. Mm -hmm. um, and we we just have like a naming structure for the themes that we use. So, uh, you know, we each have our own dev themes with our names on them that have like dev in brackets. Um, but we also have like V1.1 or V1.2 and then like the major change that was made for that. So we can keep track of everything that's happening on there. Nice. Very cool. Um, yeah, well, this I mean, this is super exciting. And like what we're what we've done here with this tool is we've effectively gotten to the point where like if we if we were just setting this thing up, this is our first action. Nobody's looked at it yet. So we can just work like this. We, we, we make changes when we save them, they automatically go live. Um, and then it sounds like as we get more mature, we would use a flow where we have like a dev version of the theme and we would just swap to that once it's approved. Um, yeah, this this is a pretty good like crash course are there any specifics that you think are are really worth calling out here or, or digging into as we kind of hit head toward the end we got about 20 minutes of time on the clock um so if there are any like highlights that you want to show off now's the time 
Hmm. I think maybe creating a snippet or creating a, a section might be useful. Um, I'm yeah. interested in seeing in the chat what, what others would want to see in the last 20 minutes that we have here. My default is to create a section just because I think that was the, we, we have our, uh, our people taking our dev test, create a section. And I can, I know it can be a little bit confusing. So what if, yeah, what if we did this? What if we put together a, um, like a sale banner? So instead of this, okay. instead of this, uh, oh, hello chat, we could put together like a, you know, one of those kind of peak banners that you get where people see like, we're running a sale until August by now, um, that, that sort of thing. And that, okay. yeah. I think so. Be... Let's let's call it a promo bar, um, okay. and we're going to let's create a new section. So this section is not going to exist on the uh, the home page. It's going to be a global section available no matter which page you're viewing. Okay. So um, I think it's going to be helpful pulling up the section documentation so you can see the structure of it. Okay. Shopify. Section documentation. Uh, building themes. So we need to basically create the schema for creating a Shopify theme section. Uh, where should I one. look for this? I'm going to send you a link here. In the, can you drop it in the Twitch chat? I'll drop it in the Twitch, yeah. yeah. Okay. So here. Use sections, okay. Um, all right. So there are three major parts to the theme section. Um, the first is going to be the schema, and this is where we're going to set up the settings that we want to have available to the merchant to be able to make changes. Uh, the second is JavaScript, the third is style sheet. So like, like okay. components, if you want section specific JavaScript or section specific uh, styling, you can do it directly within the section file. Oh, nice. Um, okay. Okay, so we're going to build out schema. So I think you can click on that schema tag and it'll take you down to that section. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so there are I would all do different kinds of yes. So okay, we're going to start with this that base. Um, yep. Always open uh, closing schema tag. And then it looked like it was a JavaScript object or JSON object, I should say. Yep. Okay. So first, we're going to name it. We'll call it promo bar. Oh. Yep. Okay. And now uh, hit comma. Okay. I guess technically it's going to show up. Okay. Well, actually, let's go ahead and see so to save that. Go to theme.liquid. Um, theme.liquid. And we are going to add the promo bar section. So search or you're going to look for section header, which is, uh, you know, a little bit further up. It's going to be a section space and then a quote header. Oh, I got you. Section. Yeah. Header. It's not going to be equals. Space. Oh my god. Yeah. Try a single quote. Boom. Okay. So there's our section header. So above that, we're going to add section. Uh, what do we call it? Promo dash bar. Yeah. Section promo bar. Okay. Like that. Yep. Okay. All right, and just for so go ahead and save that, and just for fun, go to the promo bar .liquid file, and we're just going to add some text or add like above the schema, um, created like a, a div that just contains the text promo bar. Jeez, My phone's yelling at me. <laughs> um, okay, sorry. I'm gonna just like any HTML. Just yeah, we're we're basically just creating some kind of element in here. Uh, so we could probably do it like everything is on sale. Yes. Okay. Okay. So go ahead and save that. And now let's go back to the store. Back to the store, which is here. And, and refresh. refresh. There's our promo so, bar. There's our promo bar. So now go to the theme customizer. We're going to be jumping around a little bit here. It'll be worth it. I believe it. OK, theme customizer. So I'm going here. Okay, so scroll up. Going and to, go to customize. customize. OK, 
Okay. And you see your new promo bar section on there. So you click on it. It doesn't have settings yet, but now we're going to add a setting. Okay. Okay. So go back into your code. Promo bar. Yep. And you're going to go comma and then settings. And this is going to be an array. Okay. And now we're going to create an object inside this. Okay. And we're going to set the type to text. We're going to set the ID to title. And we're going to set the label to promo bar text. Okay. Okay. Now delete the text that you just added inside that paragraph tag. And we're going to add the double braces and say sections.settings.title. Okay. It might be section uh, singular. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and save that. Um, you might get an error. Uh, go back to theme kit or the, yeah, it's the, the formatting sometimes breaks the schema. I think so. Yeah. I think what I just did was I, uh, I have to do Fix like the okay. save without yeah. formatting thing. Yeah. Okay. So now go ahead and refresh the theme customizer. Something mm. didn't update. Go back to uh, invalid JSON tag schema. What did we do wrong? Settings. Oh, I delete the comma after label. Yeah. Done, done. There we go. OK. And OK, go into Chrome bar. And now we see a field here. And now it's all automatically updating. So we just created a section where it has a variable. We created a section setting in there. And it would look just like it would have did before. That is super cool. Um, and if we move back, we can see that's all good. I can save that text. Yep. And then what if we want to like style this? Do I just throw a style tag up top? OK, so what we're going to do is change it from a paragraph tag to a div or just delete the paragraph tab. OK. Way. OK. Um, and we're going to change the type. Actually, go back to the theme customizer. Sorry, this is kind of awkward. Um, go back to the theme customizer and delete the text that you just added in there. OK. OK, and save. OK, now go back to the code. And we're going to change the type from text to rich text. Like that? Yep. And go ahead and save. OK. And refresh. It didn't that update. Didn't work. I think you might have uh, refreshed too quickly. Aha. There we go. OK. So this is the rich text editor that Shopify has inside the theme section. So you can bold, you can italicize, you can add a link. OK, so if I wanted to say everything is on sale until October 1st. And then let's say buy now. OK. Now highlight the buy now text and let's add a link. So Shopify can automatically oh. add like categories here of what kind of, kind of link you want to add. You can also type in like a custom link as well. But now we can link directly to the home page collection. We can link directly to the product. And then once you save that. That is cool. Thomas, yes, please, especially for the schema. I don't I can't express how many times it just like start deleting chunks of schema to see if the error goes away. Um, and then the, I got a question about, oh no, can I do it when I'm, how do I do this? I, I always forget. Oh, what's the emoji bar? It's like, uh, why well, don't I remember what it is? I use it literally all the time. I'm like drawing a blank right now on how <laughs> I do this. I can like do oh, this. Oh, it's, um, control command space. Control command space. There it is. 
Yeah, geez. I, like, I was like, <laughs> I literally just did this. What does my hand do? Um, <laughs> yeah, control, command, space. Then, uh, all right, so this is now set up where we've got rich text, which is super cool. Now, if I wanted to, like, make the div, you know, blue or something, um, okay. can I just stick styles right into this, uh, this snippet, or do I put them somewhere else? So you can create, like where you have like the schema tab, you can add a style sheet tab. Like this? Yep. And if you want to add a SAS support, you can add a single quote uh, to the first one to do a single quote as CSS. Up to you, but like it's that? an option. Yep. That's cool. OK. So now we can say um, dot, yeah, add a. Like make the background blue. Let's no uh, stop helping. <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna use this public one instead. Yeah. It did not. Didn't say. like my thingy. Looked um, fine to me. Oh I, need to, oh, I didn't save. Those changes are saved. Now, if I reload. So I don't know why it's not changing. Is it putting anything? I'm not, I'm not going to try to inspect the code. I feel like that's going to be confusing. <laughs> um, it's what I would do. So we've got our style sheet. You can Maybe also I... just add style tags if you wanted to. Oh, yeah, let's try it. Oh, it just. Crime and sake. OK, um, there we go. Try this one more time. Let's see if it was just the SCSS. It was the. There we go. Yep. For whatever reason, the the SAS didn't like it. Um, so we can make this color white, and then we can do like the promo bar. A will be color inherit, and font weight bold, and that should. So for adding custom fonts, um, you can, it depends where you're getting the fonts. You're, if you're getting them from like a CDN or something like that, you'd reference that in the theme.liquid file or in a style sheet that you're referencing in theme.liquid. Um, if you're uploading custom fonts, like you purchase fonts from like myfonts.com, you can upload the font files into assets. And then in your, in your style sheet file, you can reference those global fonts. I think the... The refresh might just be try low. try uh, uh it, there's a paragraph tag that it automatically wraps that in it could be that oh okay Oops. updated I don't know why it's not updating. It like it partially updated. There's I think probably a specificity thing going on. It is oh, fighting yeah. with my it's fighting with my colors. I do think it's just slow to update though, because now it's picked up part of the styles, but not oh, all yeah. of them. Um so like it picked up this color inherit. So I think it might just be that it takes a second for it to clear. Um, but that is fine um, because. Oh, go back to your code. Oh, it's not geez. Promo. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Trying to blame Shopify. It's absolutely not Shopify's fault. Is uh, it still not updating? Why is it not updating? <laughs> come on, cooperate. Because the, the link was picked up. Yeah, the link was picked up. And it just doesn't like. It's not. It, it was. Yeah, it's definitely slow to update. Promo bar. It is correct. Yeah, promo bar p. That's okay. I mean, we get the gist. It looks like it. Yeah. It just needs a little bit of time to think, um, and that is fine. And probably this comes down to me doing CSS wrong more than anything else. Uh, it's not but, even showing up on there. But anyway. Yeah, we'll get there. It'll show up eventually. Uh, but that is super cool. Like we were able to get this in there. We were able to get it to mostly cooperate. And the fact that we were able to make this customizable that quickly where, 
you know, we can go in here and change this text. Like, oh no, we changed the date. It's available until September. No, it's in, it's available until Friday. Go faster. Um, <laughs> that. And then. And eventually your promo bar will actually update in the customizer as well. Oh yeah, it'll update in the in the customizer, which was over one of these. Oh man, I have so many. So many, tabs. many, so many open. Okay. Um, and yeah, if I, can... I hard refresh in here, there's that. So yeah, well, whatever I did in here. Definitely is an just, update, but yeah. Yeah. So cool. You just created a Shopify store. You created a product. You downloaded the theme. You made changes to the theme. Yeah. I mean, this is amazing. Like I'm, I'm very impressed with how quickly this happened. Um, and it's really, really nice. I am definitely, oh, look, I just had to, I had to mess with it a little bit and now it oh, came back. Okay. Who knows? Well, good. Who knows? <laughs> you just had to save again. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> it got there eventually. Uh, but yeah, this is like, this is wonderful, right? This is, this is super cool that it, uh, that we were able to put this together this quickly, that we were able to get something like this, um, kind of stood up on, you know, on the order of under 90 minutes, including screwing around and Photoshopping corgis and all the other things that we did. Um, yeah. For someone some who questions. wants to take this further, mm -hmm. where should they where should they go next? So Shopify.dev is going to be the grand source of all information you could possibly need about Shopify theme development. Um, that's a really great place to start going through the detail of how to how to build themes and how to make those customizations. Um, the let's see, there's if you join if you become a Shopify partner, there's a Shopify partners Slack channel as well that you can join and ask questions in there. Um, you can also join our Twitch stream next week as we go through the build process. Process. <laughs> I keep on saying that. And ask questions on Twitter. The Shopify developer community is always super happy to help. So excellent. Good place to start. Cool. And if somebody wants to uh, learn more about you, where should they go? You can find me on Twitter at KVLLY. You can find my website at KVLLY.com. You can find the tap room at thetaproom.com. You can find uh, Ladybug Podcast at ladybug.dev. Commerce T at commerce By the way, the tap room's website is built on Shopify. Commerce T website is also built on Shopify. Um, what, am I, what else am I missing? Uh, my dev store, or my, yes, my, my merch store is. Uh, shop kvlly.com and my freelancing book is start freelancing dot today i have a lot of websites <laughs> i feel like i missed at least two of those but i uh yeah there are there are a lot of places to go and find <laughs> more information about I kelly think everything's linked on my own personal site which is kvlly.com uh this one yes yeah Go there. Yeah. I mean, this is, so this was super fun. I, I had a lot of fun doing this. Um, I think that we just kind of scratched the the surface, but we showed that it's, this is a, this is a very tractable problem. Like if you've got clients and they have lots and lots of opinions about how they're going to edit copy, move things around, rearrange their homepage. This is a really flexible way to let people do that in a visual way while not giving up your control as a developer over making things kind of nice and manageable and having a local workflow. So I am, uh, I'm really excited about that. Um, Me too. Cool. I do it every day. <laughs> yeah, this is, so this is a lot of fun. Kelly, thank you so much. Uh, I need to do a quick shout out. I forgot to, to mention um, that we have live captioning going for all of our shows and that is made possible Ooh. by uh, White Coat Captioning, who's in with us today. So thank you so much for being here. And the captioning costs are covered by Netlify, Fauna, Sanity, and Auth0, who all chip in to make this show more accessible to more people, which warms my little heart. Um, make sure that you go and check out our schedule. We've got so much good stuff coming on. We've got Emma coming on uh, next week to, uh, I'm gonna try to talk her out of her opinions about Taco Bell. I think that's gonna be, I imagine this is a losing battle, but we got to interview. It's a losing battle. <laughs> and then uh, later on in the week, we've got Ben Elegwadu coming on to teach us about React with TypeScript. That's going to be so, so, so much fun. And just so many amazing things coming on. Like, definitely take a look at the schedule. It's going to be so good. Uh, come, come hang out with us. Um, 
And with that, I think we are going to call this episode done. Kelly, thank you so, so much for being here. Chat, Thanks thank so you as always me. for hanging out. Stay tuned. We're going to raid. We will see you next time. Farewell.